Okay, so today we are going to look at uh, the topics of coordinate system, uh, satellite ephemeris, and how to compute the position of the satellite. Okay, so our main goal today is actually to be able to compute the satellite position at each time. But uh, we, before we can do that, uh, we need to understand various concepts, such as the various coordinate systems that uh, we need to understand, as well as the satellite ephemeris. Satellite ephemeris refers to the coefficients or parameters that are transmitted by the satellite to the users. And then we can combine these uh, coefficients or parameters to the uh, computation okay <clears throat> okay so why don't we start from a, a simple look of our earth first um can uh, does anyone turn on microphone by any chance uh -huh. okay so <clears throat> So when we when we consider our Earth, you know, uh, the very ideal look is always a sphere, which is like a circle, right? But uh, in fact, our Earth is not uh, a sphere. It's more like a elliptic, ellipt elliptical. Elliptical is like this. Circle is like this, but elliptical is like this. Okay. And in addition, the Earth is also not uh, rigid, meaning that uh, at each part, at each spot on Earth, uh, it doesn't have a uniform density. Okay. So if you take a look on the left-hand side, if we if we consider Earth as a, an ellipse, okay. So we have like a, the distance on this axis, we call it, well, the longer one we call semi-major axis. So this is a longer one, okay? And for the shorter length of the axis, this one, the shorter one, okay? We call semi-minor axis. So for A, we call major, semi-major axis, okay? And uh, so basically when A and B, if they are equal, then we have a circle, right? For, for a sphere, A and B will be equal, but then for an ellipse, A and, a and B will not be the same, okay? So the... Because A is larger than B, okay, we can then compute the uh, the difference between this the uh, size between A and B using these two types of parameters. Uh, one is eccentricity, which is E, okay. This one is computed from a square minus b square over over a square uh, in another word it is uh, one minus b square over a square okay so typically because b is smaller than a so this term will be a decimal number less than one right so ex eccentricity is like the difference between one and the difference between B and A, okay? There's another parameter also, sometimes uh, we also use it, but uh, not so often, it's called flattening uh, factor. This is uh, computed as A minus B over A, which is one minus B over A. So in a way, uh, E and F, they are, they are related by this formula, okay? But we often use E more, okay? So for example, if 
uh, actually, mm, it's also a question of what A and B are from of our Earth. So we have like a a world standard that tries to compute A, B, and also the radius of Earth. Okay, so. Uh, in different systems, they compute differently. One of the important standards is called WGS standard. I think it stands for World Geodesy and then Standard, I think. And then 84 means year 84. So for this WGS 84, the uh, value of A is considered 6378.136 kilometers. B is considered 6356.751 kilometers. And the radius is 6371 kilometers. Okay. So it, you, we go by standard to use these numbers because uh, the Earth is not so round and although we say that is an ellipsoid or ellipse okay is ellipse or ellipsoid but uh, it's not always the same everywhere right okay and uh, if you remember listening to the previous training related to Beito training they also come came up with their own a b and r as well so i guess you know different uh, labs different center they can everyone can compute their own a b and r for uh, utilization later okay okay so for example if you look at uh, a b and r according to wgs dub uh, 84 or, or actually it stands for world geodetic system not standard system okay so we can try to find the electric eccentricity. Uh, I don't know whether I have it for you already. Okay, I guess not. So E is gonna be equal to one minus B square over A, A square, which is one minus 6356.51 and 6348.36. Can you help, can, you, can one of you help me compute this value? Also, we can also compute flattening factor, which is one over B minus A. Can uh, can G help me compute uh, F? Can Pio help me compute E? By any chance? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can use MATLAB or, or I don't know whatever, or calculator. No problem. So I calculate that is what first and that is take a long time to go away. Uh, so what do you get G for uh, the flattening uh, factor? I get zero point zero zero T. Yes or no teacher? I don't know. I don't. I don't have calculator with me. I you just compute. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. So this is like a flattening factor tells you how flat it is. I guess. Yeah. If B is if if B and A are very different, like B is half of A. Let's say B is one half of A. You get F as one minus one half, which is point five. You know. So if B is larger, then the flattening is larger. If B and A are very similar, you get flattening future to be quite small. I guess the same applies to eccentricity as well. Yes. Okay. Uh, so what do you get pure? This it's one has to square. You have to square it, no? Oh, sorry. Oh, square it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't look either. Uh, Right. So you just do B and A, B over A, and then square is okay as well. Okay, uh, zero point zero zero six. Zero point zero zero six. Six. Yeah. 
That's all? Yeah, uh, oh. six, eight, nine, four, two, okay, nine. Something, right? Okay, that's yeah. fine, that's fine. Okay, okay. So these are, like, these are the typical number that we see and we will obtain from the satellite as part of many, many parameters for use in computing the satellite orbit, okay? Okay, so let's go to the coordinate systems. Before we go to coordinate system, let's look at one in, an interesting reference system first. Uh, so in the old days, uh, there's one, uh, we, we could, uh, can you turn off the microphone many times? Yeah. You could also uh, look at this, our sun in our universe as the center, okay? Uh, this is called absolute reference system. I think there, there are other names as well for such a system. So when we think about a reference system, we also think about uh, three axes, you know. They can be X, Y, Z, they can be whatever, <laughs> I don't know, you know, there are different types of reference system that we can use. So if we look at our universe and we think about the sun as like the center of the universe, okay, and uh, because our Earth will rotate around the Sun, right? And every and whenever it rotates, you know, in certain position, maybe we are at the how do you call it the equinox, spring equinox and fall equinox. Equinox mean that our Earth, which has an angle, is not like a straight up. So it has an angle that uh, whenever this equator plane, this is equator plane, okay? Whenever it uh, perpendicular to the sun, we call it equinox or orthogonal, no? So there will be two part, two sides, okay? When it's spring equinox, you see that the northern part of Earth, north part of Earth, you know, we receive more, we receive more sun than the south, okay? On the other hand, if you talk about the autumn equinox here, okay? Then uh, similarly, the south, uh, the planes will be orthogonal to the uh, this direction, and the uh, uh, southern part of the Earth will receive more sun than the north. Okay. The southern part of Earth receives more sunlight, okay? For us, because we are at the equator area, so it doesn't matter too much. But uh, in general, what uh, happens is that for uh, equinox, either spring or fall equinox, we will have uh, the equal amount of sunshine during daytime and nighttime, okay? And uh, what else? Then, I think there are some other pictures as well. Okay, this one. So this is like the, uh, uh, the comparison between equinox and solstice, okay? This is the sun, okay? So at the moment, we are very close to uh, autumn, autumn or fall equinox or at the moment, okay? So uh, normally it occurs around this time, 22 to 23 each year, okay? And then for uh, March equinox, this is called vernal or summer equinox. Uh, is it, no, no, not summer, sorry. Spring equinox, spring. It's, it's another season, okay? Then uh, during June and December, okay, we will have uh, the season so-called solstice, okay, and the exact days will be during twenty 
to 22 of June and 21 to 22 of December. Okay. So these are the four main seasons that uh, of our Earth. Okay. So what are well? Uh, so if we go back to this picture, so this absolute reference system is a system that is actually is convenient because we use the sun as the center, right? So if we want to know where things are in our universe, using the sun is not so bad, right? If we want to know where our Earth is in the universe, we ref refer that to the sun is also not bad. But if we want to specify something else, let's say we want to specify the our position on Earth or how the satellites rotate around the Earth, should we use this type of system? You think? So if you want to find position of users on Earth, or satellite orbit, which orbits around the Earth should we use this type of system? Well, the answer is, it's not so appropriate because we want to refer to our Earth, not the sun. Are you still there, Any everyone? I don't see your face, though, because the, yeah, yes. when it's open up, I don't see anyone. Okay. So if you just quiet, then I cannot, uh, I don't know whether you're still on or not. Okay. So that's why we have to look at different types of coordinate system. And there are four coordinate system that we look at. Uh, the three major ones are uh, earth centered earth fix or ECEF coordinate okay so this we we'll see this very often so for these the coordinate we will look at the axis of x y and z okay sometimes the uh, ECEF can also be considered as the name as geocentric and spherical coordinate as well the next coordinate we'll look at is called uh, geodetic and el or elliptic ellipsoidal coordinate. And for this coordinate, we look at uh, longitude, latitude, and height. Where this height is the ellipsoidal height, meaning that is the height, like a, is the ideal height that we assume that the Earth is ellipsoid, okay? But in real life, it's not, no. So you have to give offset. Uh, number three, this one is called, uh, this is actually very important. We use it quite a lot when we talk about users on Earth. This one is topocentric coordinate. Uh, or sometimes we just call it an E, uh, N, N, E, U, coordinate or NUE coordinate. Oh, I think the top one is more uh, common, okay? Another name is a datum coordinate as well. So in this case, we also have three axes, but uh, we uh, put the axis at in the north direction, east direction, and up direction, okay? And the last one, this one is, is a 2D, to the coordinate called orbital orbital coordinate system that consists of the range and also the angles. And the last one is used for, uh, in a way, to help compute the satellite positions, okay? So actually today, 
Well, I mean, I would say that all coordinate systems today, they are all important because they help us understand how to pinpoint location on Earth, in space, and, and so on. But all of these are related to Earth, not the sun, okay? So let's take a look at one at a time, and then we go to the satellite parameters, okay? So let's look at the first one. The first one is actually the simple one. It's the simplest coordinate system, and it's very uh, easy to understand, okay? So basically, we have a X, Y, and Z, okay? The center or the origin, is hypothetically at the center of Earth, at the center of mass of Earth, wherever that be, okay? And X and Y, they are 90 degrees apart, 90 degrees apart. And the plane for X and Y, they constitute what is called equatorial plane, okay? So you can say that X and Y, they you know, the, this plane from X and Y axis, they are like horizontal, you know, think about Earth, okay? And then for the Z, the Z is, it goes up, okay? Z also uh, perpendicular to X and perpendicular to, uh, to Y as well, okay? So where do we use the ref, uh, where do we use a reference of x so the x axis will be at the prime meridian or the greenish line okay do you know where the greenish line is which country is that located at you know pure have you heard of greenish line yes i have it Ah, you, you know where that is? Greenish line? Can you guess? Uh, Greenish line. Uh, Which country? Uh, uh, Greenish line. Oh, let me check. Let me go to the land. Uh, UK? Yep, UK. So if you look on the any website and you look at the Greenish line, okay. Greenish uh, it's next it's not greenwich okay it's greenish greenish line okay and look let me look at the images yes so uh if you look at these images okay it takes a little bit a little bit long to uh yeah this is a greenish line it's a line <laughs> Okay, and it's the line that leads up to the Royal Observatory in London, which is in Green Greenwich. Yes. And actually this line, they say that it's about 100 meters away from the right place. Okay. And this Greenwich Meridian is the line where we start with zero longitude as well. Okay. Uh, many people come to visit uh, these lines every year. I was one of them a while back, okay? Anyway, if you are interested, you can go and take a look. I guess they also have many other pictures of the greenish line. Let me see, maybe some of them looks a bit easier. If you go to this observatory, I think this is the observatory, I guess, yeah. So this line just leads you all the way to the observatory, basically. You can just follow the line, you know? Yeah. Something like that, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's greenish. So it's like a standard, you know, whether it's right or wrong, that's another thing, but uh, it, it uses as a reference. Okay, and this is where the x axis is, where it starts at x is zero. Okay, so this ECF coordinate, uh, you can imagine that uh, it can tell us position of anything on the earth, 
inside the earth, outside the earth, you know, everything around here can be, uh, we can find the X, Y, Z, okay? If you're on earth, you can find X, Y, Z. If you are inside the earth, you can find X, Y, Z. If you are above the earth, uh, in space, like, like satellite, you can also find the, uh, you can also find the X, Y, Z coordinate, okay? Another name is also CTRS, or Conventional Terrestrial Reference System as well, okay? And uh, this Z axis, uh, it will rotate, okay? In this figure, I draw the Earth as a straight up, there's no 23 degrees angle. Right, so in practice, this Earth is also is actually uh, not straight up, but it goes like this. So this is Z T, okay. So when I draw like a straight up, it's like only for simplicity. And then what are some numbers that we see then? Okay, so X Y Z, uh, the unit is in meter. This is an example. Okay, if you see X, like a one minus one million, Y maybe six million, and then Z maybe uh, one million meters. Okay, which is uh, one thousand five hundred kilometers, for example. You know. Okay, uh, what's the radius of Earth? Can you remember from the previous page? G. What is the radius of Earth? Uh, 360. Uh, no, no, no. The radius of Earth. Rasami Lok. Ninety. Oh. One hundred. One hundred eighty. เอ่อคุณเข้าใจคําว่ารัศมีป่ะรัศมีโลกรัศมีโลกรัศมีโลกอือฮึ How large is the earth Okay it's 6300 6371 kilometers อ่า and uh, so it means that this number is smaller than 6,300, right? So probably we, this, whatever this is, it has to, first of all, it's, is this one is, is it at the Northern or, 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 or Southern hemisphere? Okay. Anything above this equatorial line, this is northern hemisphere. This is southern hemisphere. Okay. So the first one is it northern or southern hemisphere? Z can be positive or negative. Pure. You think this is northern or southern hemisphere? Yes. Uh, I, that's a question. Um. Northern. It has to be northern because Z is positive, northern. right? Yes. Yeah. If uh, if Z is here also, but it's negative value, so this has to be in southern hemisphere. Okay. So, uh, also, it's uh, probably uh, inside the Earth because. Uh, Z is less than 6,300, right? Anyway, so, so anyway, so that's, it, it is one of the coordinate system, is the simplest one. And uh, so, so we can use it as one of the, one of the, you know, uh, coordinate to tell position on Earth or, or position of satellite as well, okay? Okay, before that, Let's go take a look at this quickly. Uh, when we change coordinate, often we try to rotate the reference frame. Okay, for example, 
if I consider the the blue lines, which are x, y, and z, okay, coordinate system. If I rotate the z axis by theta, it means the x axis and the y axis will rotate by theta as well, okay. So if we know that, uh, if we know a position here, that in the old coordinate, it is the x, y, and z, the question is, if we change coordinate by rotating the z-axis, and, ro and, and naturally, we rotate y and z and x-axis by theta, OK? What is then what is the new uh, coordinates of this user or this position in the new uh, coordinate system? So when we rotate, x becomes x prime, the y axis will become y prime. Okay, for z axis, because we rotate around z axis, so the axis is still the same but let's call it z prime, okay? So let me take this out so that there are not so many lines here, okay? Well, uh, we can compute the new the new position in the new coordinate, like xp prime, okay? So if initially the position is here, okay, if we draw a straight line to x-axis, we get here, and this size is xp, okay. Oh, I mean, if, the, if, uh, if initially is xp, yp, and zp, after the axis rotation of theta, what is the new uh, x prime p, y p prime and then z p prime okay so we are still at the same place but now we have to map it to the new axis which is x prime so if we draw these uh, red lines this is x p prime okay so this x p prime which is this length is equal to x p cosine theta, okay? And then add it with uh, yp, yp, and then move to uh, uh, this axis, okay? So this is yp sine theta. So this line of xp prime, consists of two parts, okay? One part is xp cosine theta, and the other part is yp sine theta, okay? Similarly, you can use a similar approach for yp prime and then zp prime. Uh, notice that for z, because we rotate around the z axis, so there's no change, right? So this is in in effect, in fact, it's just xp prime, yp prime, and then zp. Okay. So note on this uh, conversion. This is how we convert from uh, one uh, co coordinate system to another. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, you can uh, use a star here. This is like a summary. If we try to convert from x, y, z coordinate to a new coordinate, okay, where the origins are the same, we don't change the origin yet, okay. In such a case, if we uh, rotate around z axis, okay, we can write the equation on the previous page in a matrix form like this. 
So xp prime is xp times cosine plus yp times sine and then plus zero. Okay, this is from this equation. And then for yp prime is minus sine theta xp plus cosine theta yp plus zero. And then for zp prime is just zp. Uh, this vector is called a rotation vector. Oh no, rotation matrix. Okay, so we can just use it, you know, when we see some rotation. And similarly, we can instead of doing rotation around z axis, we can do rotation around x axis. You know, you can play around with this. You so you get rotation axis, a rotation matrix for x rotation around x-axis, okay? So here we use our x theta. So this will be the co the values in the matrix for rotation. Or if you have a rotation around the y-axis, okay? So we'll use this type of uh, values, okay? So you can play around, let's say that uh, uh, Initially, you have x, y, c equal to two, one, two, five, okay? And theta is, let's say, is uh, uh, 30 degrees, okay? You want to know the new position in the new coordinate, you know? So you can just uh, put cosine of 30, which is the square root three over two, sine theta, one half, zero, minus one half, square root 3 over 2, 0, 0, 0, 1, okay? We know that for the z, you get the same thing, so you don't change, right? And then for the xp prime, you get uh, square root 3 over 2 plus 1. So you get 1 plus square root 3 over 2. And this one, you get uh, minus, minus 1 half plus square root 3. You know, for example, so this is how you change coordinate, you know, from one coordinate to another. Uh, the position is the same, but when you change the reference frame, the positions, the numbers will be different. Okay, so that's what we mean. Okay, so that's X, Y, Z, and with some concept of how, of conversion of frames. Okay. Next, let's take a look at uh, what is called uh, the geodetic and ellipsoidal coordinate, which is the oops, the, which is longitude, latitude, and then height. Okay. So we can also call this latitude, longitude, and height as geodetic latitude, geodetic longitude, geodetic uh, height. For the height, sometimes we call ellipsoidal height. Okay, so for this the coordinate, if you look at the same Earth with the same center, the, uh, this is the prime meridian, okay, this line is a prime meridian. So the difference is that uh, now when we talk about one position, okay, we can call it X, Y, Z, but we can also use the longitude, latitude, and height as well. Okay, so what's the long? What's the longitude? Longitude is just the angles from the Greenwich meridian, you know, to where to. Let's say this is satellite to where uh, this line is. Okay. Okay, the line where this the satellite, you know, uh, perpendicular to Earth, and then enter all the way to the center of Earth. Okay. So this is phi, and from the center, this is phi prime, okay? So anyway, so uh, lambda is just the uh, longitude, okay? And latitude is the phi, and height is the height between the objects above Earth and, uh, and uh, Earth, okay? So, so for latitude, longitude, and height, can we, uh, can we tell position of 
anything inside Earth you think pure? Yes. But then the height will the height will be what? The high will will it be positive or negative? Positive. No, it will be negative. Oh, oh, mm. you're right. It will be positive. Yes, yes. Because but the height is not not mm. not negative. It's always positive, right? So it's reference to sea level. No, no. There's no reference at this point. Reference of what? Is uh, measure from what point? Uh, sea ah, level. Is okay, you mean like if I have a ground and this is yeah. satellite, and I find longitude latitude and this is height, right? Is this a sea level? Right? I think it's the mean sea level. Yeah. It's like the average. Because ab above Earth is all water, right? <laughs> right? Around the Earth is like all land and water, right? Yes. Uh, so is the, I mean, if you look at the Earth, the water may not be the same uh, everywhere. So, so this line, this side, this line is like a, let me call it mean sea level. Mean sea level, the average mean, the average sea level, okay? But in fact, the sea level, they're not always the same, no? Maybe they fluctuate, <laughs> right? Okay. Yes. And sometimes they call it MSL, no mean sea level, if you see somewhere. Okay, but however, this height is not the height, the actual height from the satellite all the way to ground. Because imagine if you are in uh, north of Myanmar, or you're in Yangon, the north of Myanmar, the land is very high compared to uh, mm -hmm. mean sea level, right? Yes. <laughs> so, so this height is a high compared to mean sea level, not the actual ground. Okay. Yes. So we talk about that a little bit more later. Okay. So, what are some example numbers? A longitude, say one hundred point point four seven degrees. Latitude of thirteen point seven five degrees, and the height is ten meters. I think this is like near Lat Kalabang or KMATL. Uh, court position okay and this is a sign convention if you are east of uh, meridian you have positive longitude if you are west of meridian you have negative uh, longitude okay well but um, sometimes some people don't say negative they just add up right 190 until until 360 uh, degrees okay for latitude as well if you are north of equators, then you are north, you're positive. If you are south, you are negative. Or some people just say number and then in parentheses they say south. That's also possible. Okay. Now, okay, an important part here is, so how do we convert from longitude, latitude, height, coordinate to ECEF coordinate? Meaning, how do we do this? Okay. Well, maybe I'm not going to go into derivation too long, but uh, if you look in many derivation in many texts, what they do is they're looking at Earth as a 2D view. Okay. And let's say this is the satellite. This is like surface of Earth. Okay. So we'll draw this line all the way. Okay. And this is the long latitude phi, similar to previous page. And they will draw this all the way to uh, this the diagonal line, vertical line, okay? This length is called n phi, okay? This is B, this is A, which is semi-major axis, okay? And uh, uh, so in here, what they do is, so you can use this formula to compute. So basically, what is x? x is uh, 
this length n phi plus height, which is the whole length. Okay, and then you take cosine of phi, and then you take another cosine along longitude and move to the left. Okay, and that's all. For y, similarly, you uh, take this whole line, okay? You uh, project projection cosine phi of the way here, and then instead of taking the cosine, you take the sine, okay? Because it's a different uh, axis, so you get this y. For z, is a bit difficult, but uh, basically you can uh, use uh, this formula or this formula to uh, compute, okay? And as for this line, this N line is called radius of the curvature in prime vertical, okay? Uh, it can be computed using trigonometry, okay? Which is A over square root one minus E square sine square feet. So we can, and what you get here is in uh, degrees, not uh, radians. So for example, if we have uh, uh, lambda and then phi and then height, okay, and we want to compute x, y, z, you can just uh, write this code on MATLAB, for example, okay, and then compute what they are. Okay. I think you get something like uh, this number. you get something like this number answers okay because it just convert between them two okay 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 secondly so then so this is how we convert from latitude longitude height to xyz how, how about vice versa if you want to convert from xyz to lat long height what do we do to convert from lat long height to longitude, latitude, and height, uh, we will use this algorithm, okay, to do it. So, uh, so basically, we can first compute if we know x, y, z, okay. So first, we can compute a lambda. Okay, lambda is just the arc tangent of y and x. between the uh, uh, y and x, okay? And uh, for phi, phi is a bit difficult. Uh, this is radians, okay? This unit, radians. Uh, this phi or latitude is a bit uh, complicated. Latitude is computed using knowledge from z here and theta. Uh, this is from the borrowing method. There are different methods, which is uh, based on uh, Z, A, P, and B. P is the range, range of uh, com computed from X and Y, okay? And uh, multiply here with B, A, and also E prime square. E prime square is similar to uh, E, but uh, is divided by b square instead, okay? So here, this is the latitude. And for height, height is just uh, <clears throat> p over cosine phi minus n. And this n is from the last page, I think. Yes. Mm -hmm. So these are some algorithms to convert between uh, back and forth between these the two coordinates, okay? In the homework, I will ask you to compute all this. And the last one, or not last one, the third one, this one is uh, the NEU coordinate or datum coordinate, you know, or topocentric coordinate. So for this one, uh, why is it useful? Because very often we want to look at the object in space 
or our position depending on where we are on Earth. Okay, so we don't com we don't compare to the center of Earth. You know, for example, if we are here, this is where we are. This is the origin. So typically, is the user location. Okay. If you want to know where the satellite position is, sometimes we have to look up from the origin up here. Okay, even same satellite where you are on Earth differently, you see different angles, right? You see different things. So, so there are times when you want to look at certain position of the satellites, for example, and you want to know what is it compared to where you are, okay? Relative position with where you are, okay? Or if you describe your position on Earth, sometimes you want to describe not in terms of X, Y, Z, but in terms of are you in the no going to the east direction, north direction, or you are up, you know? So, so this is very important for user location satellite satellite uh, uh, position in terms of elevation angles in terms of azimuth you know this type of thing okay and this like a location user location dependent okay so in order to change from coordinate of xyz which is the this line, okay, to this coordinate, NEU, okay. So for this coordinate NEU, the center is at a user location or a receiver location. North, it just point to the North Pole, like this. East, it's just uh, 90 degrees of North. Up, it just uh, go up from the ground, okay. So to convert from X, Y, Z to N, E, U, there are various steps we have to do, okay? But certainly one step is we have to, to um, move these to the left, okay? And also change the center from zero, 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 all the way to this the location, wherever you are, okay? And then uh, the process is quite difficult, but uh, it involves like a, the rotation. It involves the axis change because you can take a look that if I move X here, right? Then I need to move this center here, okay? And then I need to rotate, change with the axis. Let's say X to go to U, I have to switch. So there are different processes in here. But at the end, the rotation matrix can be computed as follow. Okay. So basically, in order to move from XYZ to NEU, so we will go through two operations. Okay. Uh, one is the X axis. Okay. We have to. Uh, uh, move it with 90 minus phi degrees. And for the Z, we move with uh, lambda plus 90. Okay. But don't worry about it. So this is the, at the end, this is what we have. We can just plug in the uh, latitude, longitude in this the rotation matrix. Or you can call it transformation matrix because the rotation is just rotate, but here we transform. And to change the center from here, we have to move up here. So this is the term that takes care of, uh, how do you call it, uh, change of origin. Okay. So x, y, z is here. X, uh, x, zero, y, zero, y, z, zero is here at this center, okay? Okay, for example, if you are given the location x, y, z, like these numbers, and x0, y0, z0 is where you are, if you want to find any coordinate, okay, 
you can just plug in that formula and uh, uh, in the back I give you some uh, some codes so that you can use it or you can write it yourself I think I should ask you to do homework by converting this uh, this uh, coordinate okay I think in the back of these slides uh, here yes there are various uh, functions that we can use. This one is, uh, this one is uh, let long height to ECEF. This one is XYZ to let long height. This one is XYZ to NEU. Okay, this is NEU to XYZ. Okay. So they can be used, but they follow the steps in here, pretty much. Okay. And uh, okay, what else? Oh, let's continue. Well, uh, in order for us to compute the range or the distance, typically we need the location of the satellite and also the location of the receiver, you know, by using the Euclidean distance. This is called Euclidean distance. So we need the location of both points okay and they have to be on the same coordinate system right typically the user is fixed on earth but the satellite is moving okay so that's why we need to find this location of the satellite and it will be our focus from here on okay typically for satellite there are different orbits like uh, low Earth orbits, about 100 to 1,000 kilometers altitude, uh, medium orbit or MEO uh, for low Earth orbit uh, is called LEO, right? For MEO, is the 5,000 to 20,000 altitude from Earth. And GEO, geostationary Earth orbit, this is like the 35,000 kilometers, okay? For GNSS, they are all in here. Okay, so let's take a look what an orbit means. Let me see which one to look first. Uh, okay, let's look at this one first maybe. Let me see which one is better. Okay, let me look at this one first. This is like a 2D uh, orbit picture. Okay, satellite is here. This is satellite, okay. And this is center of Earth. This is the where, uh, okay. Uh, wait. Let me change color a little bit so that it's a bit easier to see. Okay, so uh, this is a satellite, okay? If it travels with circular orbit, it will travel with along this orbit or this line, red line. Okay, this is circular orbit. But in fact, when it travels, it travels along elliptical orbit, along this line instead, okay? So what do you mean by it travels by elliptical orbit? So this is Earth. Okay, this is like the center of the orbit.
okay? A and B are the semi-major axis and the semi-major, semi-minor axis of the orbit, okay? So A and B here, they belong to the length of the orbit along each, uh, each axis, okay? So from Earth, this is from Earth, this is satellite, this new is an angle that we want to find, and R is a range, okay? And it will help us understand where the position of the satellite is, okay? So in the 2D coordinate, we need U and V, okay, to tell where it is. So this is Earth, O, and then satellite, Okay. And this is R. Okay. So uh, now let's look at a more detailed picture of uh, orbit. What are some parameters of satellite orbits that will be received by us? Or that will be transmitted by satellite in the na in the navigation message okay so let's take a look at this picture together okay slowly so um so in this picture we're looking at uh, orbit okay and uh, I think this is like the Earth, yes. This is like the center of Earth. Okay. So typically, uh, a satellite, this is satellite. Okay. They will travel like this. With an inclination angle, I, Okay, this is inclination angle, okay? If you talk about the satellite, like the geostationary satellite, very often I is almost zero, meaning that the satellite just along the equator lines. Okay, so these are like geo satellite, typically. But for MEO satellite and LEO satellite, they have this angle, I, is not, equal, is not equal to zero, okay? And uh, if I go back to this picture briefly, okay? So this is the orbit of the satellite. When it is closest to Earth, we call this point as perigee. When it travels, and if it is at the farthest distance from Earth, we call this point apogee, okay? If you can remember, can remember what that means, maybe you can think of apogee as like apart, you know, very far apart from us, okay? So in this picture, when the satellite, they travels to the shortest distance from Earth, this is perigee, okay? Then it just travel by itself like that. You know, it just go and go and go, okay? So, what are some other parameters that we will look at, okay? Well, let's take a look at one at a time. So, first, of, first one is, uh, if this is an, an axis, of uh, x i, uh, there are two axes. Okay, this x t is the terrestrial axis. This one is called inertial axis. Don't worry about it yet. What it means, but what it means is that uh, from this initial x axis, these angles called omega okay, where the satellite intersects the equatorial line, 
this angle is called omega is called right ascension and this dot this point is called ascending node ascending means go up is the point where the satellite goes up and cut the equatorial line and the angle from the initial inertial axis is called right ascension okay because it's on the right okay and then uh, from this line if you draw this line okay and the angle from this line all the way to the line to reach the perigee points this is called omega we call this argument of perigee or like the angle of perigee okay then uh, when the satellite travels from the perigee with an angle we call it anomaly anomaly is like an angle it's just a satellite name and this mu is new or v that we saw earlier okay so let's uh, so these are uh, you can call these values like uh, omega uh, this theta is the angle between inertial uh, axis and the terrestrial axis they will give to us so this this uh, value like theta omega small omega large omega i or new these are called orbital elements or orbital parameters okay that if you know this then you can find the satellite position in general okay a any question so far yeah this is a very big uh, slide actually but uh, it will be a bit uh, easier when we see it okay let me go to a few more slides before we have a break okay okay yes yes what's question what is your question and any question is fine okay g you have any question no no teacher uh, can you think of at least one question before the end of this class? Okay, teacher. So you should practice asking question. Okay. So, uh, so these are the parameters of the satellite orbits. Okay. Sometimes they call it uh, six Kleparian elements, which consists of um, a semi-major axis of the orbit. E of the orbit, not of the Earth, okay? So this A will be larger than A of Earth. Eccentricity of the orbit, okay? Because the orbit is also elliptical. So A and E, they will represent the size and shape of orbit, orbit of satellite, okay? So one and two. And then for the direction of the orbital plane, this is this is orbital plane. You remember for um, like GN, GPS, they have six planes of satellites. Okay, so each plane will have different angles and so on. So in order to tell the direction and and how they turn the orbital plane, orbital plane is actually not turned. It's quite it's quite fixed. Okay. So we need to know inclination angle, where the angle that satellite cuts the equatorial planes, okay? Uh, big omega, right ascension, and then small omega, argument of perigee, okay? So three, four, and five will tell the direction of the orbital plane, okay? In each orbital plane, you have a, you have a, for GPS, you have four satellites, but GPS has six orbital planes. So total, they only need 24 satellites, okay? So for GPS, there are six orbital planes. Of course, each plane has a different, in, has a different uh, big omega, okay? And uh, 
and each orbital plane for GPS they have a four satellite okay and then lastly to tell the position of the satellite we need to know what is called new or V this is actually a Latin letter called new okay which is the true anomaly or the angle between the perigee and the satellite position okay so we always know perigee so the angle new here will tell us where the satellite is from perigee okay and from there we can uh, uh, compute the uh, we can compute the what do you call it the position and so on okay uh let me go a bit you want you want a break georgie yeah teacher okay let's have a, f a 10 minute breaks okay yes. okay you have any question mr pure mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. So yeah, ask many questions. It's okay. Let me the, let me change the slide uh, the page briefly. Let me stop the uh recording quickly and then come back record.